In these perilous times, see from current events how biblical prophecy is coming to pass in front of our eyes. You're watching In the Last Days, the program that looks at Israel and the end times with teaching from a Hebraic perspective. With Martin and Natalie Blackham, thank you to our friends and partners who make this program possible. Now, here's Martin and Natalie. Shalom, dear friends. Wonderful to be with you again this week. We are carrying on what we were speaking about last week with Eliezer Ben Yehuda, my dear friend. And he came all the way from Florida, but he lives here in Jerusalem. This is his home. And uh, we're going to carry on. We're speaking about Adam and we're speaking about God. And we're going to speak about Ish, which is Ish and Isha, which is the husband and the wife. And there is so much. Is we want to give you foundations how to, first of all, to know who you are, to know how, like, family is important, and we really want to bring this kind of things during the year. And, uh, and I, I will say also, I wrote this little book about the Hebrew language, and again, is to give more uh, understanding, and, like, there is nothing better than to study in Hebrew. Obviously, Eliezer is here to help us to carry on and do that. Yes, and since, if you will permit me just one sure. minute to explain that, uh, you know, this business of, you know, he, he has just come back, from, he's just come from Florida to be with us, but his home is in Jerusalem, you know, it may be confusing for some people, you know. And so I would like to point out that uh, I have been given a ministry to make people in America in particular, but more so all over the world, become aware of the gifts of the Jewish people through Abraham and through the life of the Jewish people throughout the ages and the miracle of the rebirth of uh, the Jewish people living in their own country, speaking their old tongue, the language that was spoken by the prophets and the seers in Jerusalem and throughout the land 3,500 years ago, 2,500 years ago, all these times before we were exiled and we were spread all over the world. I've written this book, as you mentioned, mm -hmm. which is called Fulfillment of Prophecy. It's, if I do say so myself, it is a wonderful book and many people who have uh, who have read it have complained to me that I didn't put a warning here. You know, like they have a warning on the cigarettes that says it's, it can be dangerous to your health. They said I should put a warning that says it's dangerous to your ability to fall asleep. If you get this book in the evening and you start reading it, you're going to be reading it until 4 o'clock in the morning and the next day you'll send me an email <laughs> and say, my gosh, you kept me up all night. You I, know, did. I, said, Not I. <laughs> I did. Not I. Anyhow, those of you who are listening to the program in the United States of America, you can contact me and you can get the book from Amazon. And also, I travel throughout the United States and I lecture and I do book signings. So let everybody know about that. And now, let us go and discuss uh, our favorite subject, which is the Word of God mm -hmm. and the way that this Word is manifest in the teachings of the Hebrew language mm -hmm. and of the people, the Hebrew people. Last lesson, last time we spoke about the creation of man. And man was created as Adam. Adam, the name of the man, but also Adam as the human. Really, we need to make clear that it doesn't say he will create man because man is man and and the opposite of man is woman mm -hmm. but human is either male or female it doesn't make a difference you see so adam is the human but later on in the script we read ish for man the feminine of ish in hebrew all words have a male and a female all nouns have a male and a female, unless it's only a female noun mm -hmm. or only a male noun. But things that have both male and female will have a different pronunciation. And so the man is Ish, 
and the female is Isha. Now, people say, well, you know, Isha is like Ish with an I at the end. But if you look at the way that it is written, it's very interesting. If you put an A and an H at the end of the word Ish, it would be four characters, four mm -hmm. consonants. Isha is only three consonants, which is the same as Ish. And Isha, if you have Aleph, Yud, Shin, He, it means her husband. It means mm -hmm. her man. It's not the same thing. So really, you have two words that are different. One is for man and one is for woman. Now, the first question that is being asked in Judaism is, why is he called Ish? And there's two answers. There is always in, many answers. <laughs> in, in Judaism, there's at least two answers to everything, just yeah. about. You know, and the exception to the rule. You know, a rule is a rule when there is an exception. The exception Obviously. to the rule is some words only have one meaning, period. Yeah. You see? We have that so in, fr in French. Of we course. Have yeah. Of course. Yeah. So anyhow, the, uh, the one explanation is that the middle consonant in the word ish is a vowel. And it really is not necessary there, but it's put there just to be safe that we shouldn't read it as just the first and the last con consonants. Mm -hmm. The first and the last consonant, Aleph and Shin, make the word esh. Esh is fire. Mm -hmm. You see, so man is a, an existence that is similar to a flame. It's similar to a fire. Strangely enough, it is easier to see that in the word Isha. Mm -hmm. You see, because the first two letters in the word Isha mm -hmm. is Aleph Shin, no Yud, no vowel. Mm -hmm. So it's the same as Esh. And then you have the He at the end to make a soft landing. You see? And maybe that's the role of the woman, to have the soft landing. Anyhow, going back to Ish, the, the second explanation is that God created man something out of nothing. And I pointed out to you, just before we started recording, that in the first chapter of Genesis, where it speaks of the six days of creation, when it comes to the sixth day, it says that, you know, God really finished creation by noon on Friday. And he was ready to knock off early and take a long weekend. But all of a sudden, according to tradition, the angel said to him, Excuse me, God, but didn't you forget something? And he said, Oh, of course I forgot something. I was going to make a man. Mm -hmm. And so he said, we shall make a man. We shall create a man. In our image, according to our likeness. You see? And then it goes on to say, based on him saying that, and the Lord created the man, etc., etc., etc. You see? So, we have, let us make and let us create. And only later on, when we talked about Adam, mm -hmm. it says Vayitzer, and he fashioned, and he produced. You see, it's like really making it mm -hmm. something three-dimensional, you know, mm -hmm. like out of the mud, mm -hmm. you see. And that becomes Adam, the first man, and Adam as the human being, etc., etc. Like a potter. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And you know, on the high holidays, mm -hmm. uh, we have a prayer, one of the prayers for uh, asking God, petitioning God to forgive us for our sins, because mm -hmm. it's the period of repentance and return. You know, we have a, a beautiful uh, uh, prayer poem that was written in the Middle Ages, mm -hmm. and the, uh, the first verse 
says, Ki hine kechomer beyad hayotzer, virtsoto oseu virtsoto mekatzer. Just like clay in the hands of the potter. If he wishes, he lets go, you know, he leaves it the way it is. And if he wishes to, you know, he just refashions it. You see, so that's exactly what God did. You know, he, re, he fashioned the man out of the red clay mud that was Adama, the Hebrew word for earth, Adama, also from the same word Adom, which means red. Mm-hmm. You see, and Adam is red because of the Adama, you see. And the soil, uh, the red clay. Of course, mm-hmm. you see. And I, I'm also reminded of the fact that, you know, some people uh, try to define humanity by, um, by uh, color. And so you have a black man, and you have a yellow man, and then you have a white man. I've never seen a white man. And I, I recall uh, um, there's a story about one of the famous conductors, uh, Pierre Monteux, that, that when he went to Philadelphia, mm-hmm. Somebody asked him something about, uh, uh, you know, black people, white people, you know, and he said, uh, but monsieur, I, I am not white. I am pink. <laughs> and the funny thing, yeah, yeah, yeah. Pink, you know. <laughs> I know, and the funny thing, our daughter is also from Uganda, and she mm-hmm. said, people say black people, and she said, I'm not black, I'm brown. <laughs> so it's interesting, yeah. 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 And we all have the same heart. I was a nurse many years ago. Yes. And our heart is red inside. When we do surgery, we are like all Adam, the same. Right? Yeah. Red, yeah. Adam. Exactly. Yes, absolutely. And we all have the same blood. Yes. True. Yes. It's not different. Different type, but we need the blood. But among, the di- among all the same people, you have different types. Mm-hmm. You see? It's just the way it is. Yeah. Like some of us have blue eyes and some of us have mm-hmm. pink eyes. But usually we can take a medicine and we can cure the pink eye. <laughs> Anyhow, man and a woman, ish and isha. The word isha, we have from esh, mm-hmm. you see? And the word ish, we have the same aleph and shin that gives us the word ish. Ish is the first word that we hear. And the question is, why do they have the yud there? And so one of the explanations that is given by the wise men of the Jews is that it's the Aleph is for God, mm-hmm. you see, and then you have Yud and Shin. Mm-hmm. And Yud and Shin is the word Yesh. Oh, to belong? Yesh is to, there is. There is. Mm-hmm. There is. It's like present. Mm-hmm. You see, Yesh. Okay, so ish, mm-hmm. ish starts with Aleph, it starts with God, and yesh, there is such a thing, you see. And then the same people say that Isha is Aleph, mm-hmm. and then Shin and He, but the dot is on the left. Mm-hmm. So instead of She, what do we call it? How do we pronounce it? Se. And what is Se? It's a lamb. It's a lamb, mm-hmm. exactly. You see, the woman is the lamb. You see, she has the role, Mm -hmm. you see, of caring and of loving and so on and so forth. So the woman is the lamb, and the man is the, yes, the riz, you know, by gum, here I am. Sylvester Stallone, you know, (laughs) or or Tarzan, you know, or something like that. But you can hear it even in our voices. Yes. Like, God has made us different. Yes. Thank God for it, too. I know. If I had your voice... And you had my voice, something would be very oh, wrong. Something <laughs> would be very wrong. We would know that somebody is fooling around with the, uh, with the mics, you know. Exactly. They're, they're mixing up the mics. <laughs> yeah. But anyhow, uh, so this is the word ish and isha, you see. And uh, um, the interesting thing is that the story of creation is repeated and it sounds like it's a different story Mm -hmm. and some people say you know how can you be a creationist you know and i'm not here to tell you that i'm a creationist in the in the sense that you can take the uh timeline that is given in 
uh, in the scriptures, in the Hebrew scriptures, and you can actually say, well, you know, the word is the world actually came into being by the word of God exactly 5,774 years ago. Which is the Jewish calendar. Which is the Jewish calendar because it's called the calendar from creation. Mm -hmm. You see. But what we say is that this is the religious, this is God's calendar. Mm -hmm. You see, and God's calendar is, again, something that we've said before more than once is that God's time is not our time. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and in fact, I read an article that was written by a Jewish man who is uh, uh, a believer, but at the same time, he's a scientist. Mm -hmm. He teaches at MIT. You see, and he said, time has changed. That mm -hmm. from antiquity, you know, the movement of the cosmos was much slower at the time of creation. Mm -hmm. So a billion years was more like a thousand years, mm -hmm. you see, and so on and so forth, you see. And he actually, uh, the book that I read, he, and I'm sorry I don't have the name of it because I think it's important. People want to know, mm -hmm. you know, I'd like to read that book, you know. I don't remember the name. It's okay. You, you know, can. But anyhow, uh, he writes it on his shows that mm -hmm. if you look at it that way, which is a scientific way of doing it, then the, geolog the geologist's mm -hmm. explanation of the billions of years is really the same as the Jewish calendar mm. with the 5,700 years. It's interesting. When you, when you say all these things, this reminds me there is a few passages where in Jeremiah, in different passages, we say, in the end of the time, yes. Aharit Ayamim, you will know everything. And like mm -hmm. it's amazing how we are getting to know this kind of thing. Exactly. And it makes all the things coming together. It's yes, quite exciting. Because, because people gain an understanding of more than the three-dimensionality mm -hmm. of mankind, more than our life. I remember that uh, when I started studying uh, for the rabbinate, you know, mm -hmm. uh, we were told, you know, if you really think about it, we can understand one dimension, you know, which is a dot, and we can understand two dimensions, which is a line, and we can understand three dimensional, which is us. Mm -hmm. We are three dimensional. Mm -hmm. But we absolutely cannot understand the fourth dimension because we have no experience of that fourth dimension. I think today there is no question in my mind mm -hmm. that we do understand that there can be four mm -hmm. dimensions, and maybe even more than four dimensions. Just like we understand that we live in a universe mm -hmm. that is expanding and that is changing, and that there are things that we can do that actually change existence as we know it. Mm -hmm. Which is a very Jewish concept, but which is very true. Yeah, you can it's see it. it's 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 a godly concept. Yes, exactly. God has yes, given yes, us yes. God yes. has given us wisdom. Mm -hmm. You know, I used to talk with different people in the United States, you know, and I was invited a couple of times to speak to Christian scientists mm -hmm. uh, conferences. And they say that God is be all knowing and all able. <laughs> so if you uh, you get sick, mm -hmm. you know, pray to God and God will heal you. Now, well, Judaism doesn't believe in that. But they say, how can you not believe in it? You teach, and we do, in our prayers, mm -hmm. we speak of God as Rofe Cholim, mm -hmm. he who heals the sick. If you pray for God to heal you, why bother to go to the doctor? Okay. You see? So when I was in starting in, in yeshiva, the rabbi told us, of course you're going to go to the doctor. And we said, but? And he says, no, but. He says, how do you think the doctor knows what to do for you? God is a healer, and he gave the doctor the knowledge to be able to heal you. Mm -hmm. God works through people. Mm -hmm. God has 
given us a purpose on this earth to be his assistant mm -hmm. and to work on the improvement of the world, the perfection of the world, you might see, mm -hmm. say. It's very hard to come to perfection. I don't know if we'll ever reach it in our meager lifespan. We might need a bit more see? help. <laughs> but, but in Judaism, we call this tikkun olam, mm -hmm. the repair of the world, mm -hmm. you see. So doing the things that we are taught to do in the Hebrew Scriptures help to repair the world. And the reason that there is a need to repair, it's not because we have ruined the world. I mean, some people say, you know, God is very disappointed with us because we ruined his creation. God created us with the duplicity of drives, the good drive and the evil drive. Mm -hmm. You see, it's in us, in every one of us. Mm -hmm. And what we have to do is we have to work on allowing the good to overcome the evil in our in our hearts so that we can do the good thing. <coughs> and then we build a fortress, one layer of rocks at a time. Mm -hmm. You see? And every generation does its thing. And if we'll continue to do it that way, you see, and we don't stumble and fall, because if we go wrong, it goes down. You see, it's three genera it always takes three generations to repair a bad choice. This is an interesting okay. concept. And mm -hmm. a thousand generations of good will continue, will build mm -hmm. a thing. Now, if we will continue mm -hmm. in such a way that the fire in us mm -hmm. will work and will be there to improve and to fortify what we build, you see, then we're going to reach the end times. Mm -hmm. In Judaism, you know, the concept of end times is a Jewish concept, acharit hayamim. Mm -hmm. But it seems that there is a little bit of a difference in the how we conceptualize in Judaism acharit hayamim and how it's realized or, ah, or understood. Yeah, is in the last days. Is in, in the yeah, last days. Yeah, it's the, the end days. times, the yeah. last days, yeah. exactly. But here's the thing. In Judaism, we don't think that the end times mm -hmm. is like a terrible explosion and there's no world anymore. We think that end times means that we reach a state of balance in the world. And in this state of balance, there is no more war, there is no more strife, there is no more crime. Now, is this an ideal that will never be achieved? On a large scale, it can be achieved. On a small scale, will there never be a thief again? Yes, there will be probably. You see? But if we stand guard, and if we live to do justice, so that the next generation will not want to rob somebody in order to have something. You see, if everybody will work conjointly, mm -hmm. then you're going to have a situation where this will not exist anymore, and people will be able to live. In a better Each one of them, tachat gafno v'tachat te'enato, under their... Uh, vine right. and under the fig tree. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Eliezer, again to be with us and take the time to explain about the Bible and about Adam and Ish and Isha. And we are so pleased, friends, to be able to bring you this teaching from Zion here. And we, are, we will carry on through the year. You know, we really love to put bricks after bricks after bricks. And like knowing who we are, like we are speaking about the good news. We want to bring you some good news from Zion. And it's wonderful to be able to be with you. And, and please write to us uh, if you have some suggestion, what you want. You might have some question, and you can tell us. And we're always pleased to have connection with you. And, and we will also speak to Eliezer of what you are saying. And if you have some questions for him, 
just write to us and we'll pass him also to Eliezer. Now, bye-bye from now, from us, and we send you lots of blessings from Zion. Don't forget, we are living in the last days. You've been watching In The Last Days, a TV program with Martin and Natalie Blackham, the program that looks at Israel and the end times with teaching from a Hebraic perspective. If you would like to financially support the program or find out about conferences, meetings, or ministry products, then please contact us with the details on your screen. Visit our easy-to-use website at www.inthelastdays.com and register for our free e-newsletter Get the latest news from Israel, product information, online video teaching, or watch today's TV program at a time that's convenient to you. Thank you again, friends and partners, for making this program possible. See you same time, same station, for the next program from In the Last Days.